We've done it. We've rolled credits. We've seen the ending of Wasteland 3 through many hours, bugs, ranger builds, whatever it may be. How does this game compare to other RPGs? Firstly, this video is sponsored by my Twitch channel. I'm live every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday Australian night times. If you have any questions about the game or anything else, come over there and let's have a chat and talk about this great game. Wasteland 3 is a direct sequel to Wasteland 2, both developed by In Exile. And if you did make choices in Wasteland 2, they won't replicate into Wasteland 3. In Exile have basically chosen the canon ending for that game, and those choices continue into Wasteland 3. Starting this adventure, the first noticeable difference to Wasteland 2 is the upgrade in graphics for Fidelity. Everything from the landscapes to your ranges and everything in between are so much more detailed, especially with the improved lighting across the board. I ran the game on PC with everything on Ultra and didn't have many performance issues, although there is one issue in combat which will occasionally happen when the enemies take their turn. There is a bit of a hitch for a second or two, which doesn't seem to be graphics settings related. It's more of a calculation in the AI actions from what I can tell. The extra detail in Wasteland 3 is shown off in some of these moments where the camera zooms down into like a first person view for some of these conversations with key characters. These conversations are so much more engaging than the typical top down dialogue sections because you do get that personal view with some of these more important characters and it's good to add some variety to the general monotony of the gameplay. Exploring Colorado both on foot and in the new Kodiak vehicle was enjoyable however the Kodiak feels dated as an exploration mechanic to explore the world. You can't turn the camera you can't zoom in or out you are really just locked into this movement that you have on screen there was a few times where i had to leave ranger hq and sit through a long loading screen which we'll talk about then simply point and click for a few minutes until i reach my destination with nothing to explore along the way except the occasional random encounter on foot exploration, however, is where the game really shines. I came across many areas that needed a certain skill check to unlock something or open a door or whatever it may be. There are a huge amount of skill checks in dialogue as well as in the world, and that will really help you develop your party in a specific way if you wanna try and open every single check that there is. However, I did notice that there is a lot less open exploration areas compared to Wasteland 2. There are some areas that are huge standouts compared to both games being Bazaar and Colorado Springs as the two examples, but most of the side areas where you just have a single quest, they are pretty small and one linear path with a, the occasional hidden side path if you have the right perception. These areas are still enjoyable to explore, but I would have preferred a few more larger open-ended locations that weren't directly directly related to the main story. Most of these big areas are specific to the main story and everything else is just a little side objective off the path for you to explore. I often found myself just fast traveling back to Ranger HQ rather than traveling with the Kodiak to save the time and the monotony of the journey. The benefit here is that anytime you travel back to Ranger HQ, you can create a new custom character. Throughout my playthrough, I did this very regularly as I found the robust character creation system really enjoyable to use and I was constantly playing around with different builds to keep the experience feeling fresh and just playing around with different things, which is really enjoyable. This also feeds into the combat as you can carry a maximum of four rangers and two companions into any combat encounter and throughout your journey. This gives you a good breadth of characters that you can play around with as well as skills and weapons in combat. There is a good change to the combat in Wasteland 3 in that all of your allies will now take their turn at once and then all of the enemies and then the friendlies and repeat. This is a huge improvement to the combat in my opinion and it allows you to do different kinds of tactics with more efficiency like focusing down a boss or moving your whole team to a different angle in one turn, setting up multi-kills for the leadership buffs, as well as activating certain perks, gives you more control over what your characters are doing in the battlefield. I really enjoyed this change. I typically aren't a huge fan of turn-based games. I enjoyed combat here more than I was expecting, and the only downside is that in some encounters, they will start with a dialogue, discussion, and then lead into combat. In these conversations, your team is basically just standing in a circle in a doorway, and when the encounter actually starts, the enemy getting the first turn, they just melt through you as you stand in the doorway. This is really annoying, and in a lot of these encounters where I thought they were going to lead into combat, I ended up just going straight for the attack option so that I wasn't stuck in the doorway just standing out in the open. This may be annoying if you're trying to do a passive good guy playthrough, but it's well worth pointing out that you can skill check your way through a lot of conversations. It's just something that I found just to give you that safety net in these conversations, which is to attack straight away. There was one big negative that was a constant throughout my playthrough. 
and that was the bugs. Regularly throughout my 50 plus hour playthrough, I was experiencing bugs, the worst being a bug where I was locked into a combat encounter with a cat that was behind an invulnerable door that I couldn't shoot, it was impossible to lockpick, and I was just stuck in that combat encounter with nothing I could do. I had to load a previous save and try again. This is especially frustrating with the extremely long load times that get progressively longer the further you get into your gameplay, taking up to about a minute to load, which wouldn't be an issue if you weren't having to travel between sections and triggering a load screen very often. Outside of that, on the rare occasion I would have my turn just randomly skipped in combat, rangers and companions would disappear from the squad management screen, I had characters get stuck in animations and of course the performance issues during combat that I mentioned. I have also seen that people playing on console have had a huge amount of issues with performance and the game crashing. I myself am playing on PC and these are the issues that I've experienced so I can't directly talk to the console experience but if you are planning to pick up this game on console I would recommend to look up patches and get a recent opinion on the console versions. I know that in Exile are actively working on the crashes, but just a clear warning here that you may experience some issues if you are planning to pick this up on console. Now let's take a break and talk about the sound. Welcome back. Well, this calls for a drink. Cheers. Oh, good stuff. Is that you, Rangers? Boy, I ain't seen you in a donkey's age. <laughs> this calls for a, a drink. Cheers. <laughs> what do you know? I ain't had a liver for years. NPCs throughout Wasteland 3 are fully voice acted, including your companions, whoever your main ranger team is actually silent. The voice acting and the writing here is a huge, huge standout. There were numerous sections of the game where I was audibly laughing at some dialogue, and if you enjoy dark humor, then there is plenty of comedic sections that you will thoroughly enjoy. These moments are well contrasted with the more serious moments throughout the game, and if you're worried about dialogue options, there are plenty of dialogue options in this game, both skill related and just other options options where you make choices. There are plenty of options to make here. While we're still on the topic of sound, the original soundtrack here is fantastic, including the songs that have been made for the game. These songs will play during some of the key combat encounters and these are fantastic. The only issue here is that combat encounters usually last more than a few minutes and the song only goes for a couple of minutes. So you might be in a combat encounter for 20 minutes, that song you're going to hear play a fair few times. But they are enjoyable and well-made songs and they just add to the intensity of those moments. A big standout for me it was the song that plays during the end resolution screens that was fantastic in wasteland 3 the desert rangers are having supply issues in arizona and have to accept a deal with the mysterious patriarch from colorado in hopes of keeping the rangers alive back home a large portion of the rangers including your team team november are heading out to colorado as you arrive you get attacked by the dorsey gang and the game really picks up from there the patriarch serves as the key narrative point throughout the game as the main objective is to find his three children valor victory and liberty and deal with these three as you see fit whether that's arresting them hurting them or doing whatever else you may do. Wasteland 3 is an RPG in the truest sense of that term. Throughout my playthrough, I was constantly making decisions that led to various outcomes, often that I didn't see coming and not necessarily immediate decisions either. There was a couple of things that I did at the very start of the game that didn't actually play into effect until the very end. There is no good or bad choice here. There's often three or four different ways to resolve these issues and none of the major decisions felt like a good or a bad choice. There was no paragon and renegade here. Wasteland 3 constantly plays around in that gray area with its choices and its characters. No major character is either all good or all bad. You learn a bit about their backstory and their motives and everyone has done something that they aren't proud of except for those cute robots in the machine commune. Those guys are my homies for life. The world and its characters feel believable in the post-apocalyptic world and their choices. The end choice I made felt like I was doing the right thing, but discussing it with my chat during my playthrough, a lot of them had differing opinions and felt that I had actually made the bad choice. These moral dilemmas with no clear answer are a big part of the game, and this will enable you to play through the main campaign multiple times to see different outcomes, and even in some of those outcomes, they're not necessarily going to play out the same way. Even with the end decision that I made, there was 
was still other options to choose and other different varying things that could happen. Wasteland 3 is definitely shorter than Wasteland 2 and despite the bugs which assumedly will get resolved, this is a high quality RPG that is well worth your time. As an RPG fan and someone who is 100% in love with the post-apocalyptic setting, this game is perfect for me. The humor in the dialogue, the great characters, choice and consequence all throughout, it's absolutely a buy in my eyes. If you are planning to play on console, just a heads up to look to make sure there has been a recent patch that will hopefully fix some of these performance in crash issues that the console versions have, although if that doesn't bother you, feel free to just go and purchase the game. But on PC, even with these issues being the couple of bugs I experienced, this game is well worth pushing through those issues. I thoroughly enjoyed all of my time with Wasteland 3 and no moment during my playthrough did I feel was wasted or I was just doing some mundane task. And that is something that I absolutely love about this genre. And that is my review for Wasteland 3. Let me know in the comments below what you think about the game if you have played it. And also if you have any additional questions that maybe I didn't answer in this video, also chuck them down below. Happily, it will help you out there. Please follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and on Twitch where I stream three days a week, Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday, Australian night times. Hope to see you guys there. Thank you for watching this video. My name is Norza and I hope you have a great day. If we saved him or betrayed him, if we did the job we went for or we failed.